dear friend today we will see the anatomy of palate anatomy of palate palate is a partition which separate the nasal cavity from the oral cavity if you see the diagram here suppose this is the nasal cavity Here, and this is the nose. And here, this is the upper lip. And here, this is the palate. Here, this is the palate. Okay, yes. and this palate here. is present in the floor of the nasal cavity we can say and roof of the oral cavity so it separate the both cavity now whole of the palate is made up of the two part hard palate and the soft palate anterior to third ear this part suppose is the hard palate this is and this posterior part is soft palate okay here and these are the concha Okay here, suppose this is the inferior concha. Okay, hard palate here. So hard palate is made up of the two bone. Okay, these are the suppose and, the, and whole hard palate is anterior posteriorly and the side to side it is arch. Okay, it is going up convexity in towards the nasal cavity. Clear and whole hard palate is made up of the two bones. Suppose this is the here. Hard palate, a U shape here. Okay, these are the alveolar arch. Okay, here and suppose this is the midline. Here, clear. And anteriorly, anteriorly it is made up of the here. These are the palatine process of the maxilla bone. Okay, here. While posteriorly. Posteriorly, it is made up of the horizontal part of the palatine bone here. These are the, this is the horizontal part of the palatine bone. Here. Okay, which has the suture here. So in the bone, if you see here, okay here, this is the hard palate, clear here, and here in the midline, the suture, and both sides. These are the palatine process of the maxillary bone, and here these are the horizontal. process of the palatine bone okay or central part of the palatine bone here okay and this is the suture here clear so this is hard palate now this hard palate here upper surface and the lower surface both surface are covered by the periosteum first okay here both surface here is covered by the periosteum suppose this is the periosteum okay here the uh, sky blue color and on the both surface there is a epithelium okay here epithelium lines the upper surface and the lower surface here upper surface here in the nasal cavity it will line by the columnar epithelium and by the lower part here or the towards the oral cavity it will line by the stratified squamous epithelium so the two type of the epithelium lower epithelium is Keratinized stratified epithelium. Okay, here. So this is the keratinized stratified epithelium lines the lower surface. Now, here in the midline, in the midline, in the hard palate here, there is the incisive fossa here. Okay, this incisive fossa through which the inside the uh, branches of the greater uh, palatine nerves passes and the blood vessel enters here. Okay, so this is incisive fossa, and in the living being, in the this in this area is covered by the yeah, small papilla or the mucous papilla. Okay, here in this area. So in the living being, the soft structure there it is covered by the papilla. Clear. So this is and the lower surface here, the uh, the surface which is towards the oral cavity, they have the transverse ridges. Okay, 
transverse ridges and these transverse ridges give rise to the rough surface the inferior surface of the heart pellet here and these transverse transverse ridges are due to the fibrous tissue clear and fibrous tissue which is attached to the mucous membrane and the uh, periosteum here so this is the uh, heart pellet inferiorly uh, the ridges okay transversely midline is a refi here okay here and the anteriorly there is an incisive fossa in the heart pellet okay incisive fossa in the heart pellet here and which is in the living being covered by the papilla okay so this is all about the heart pellet and the heart pellet if you see the position of the heart pellet heart pellet lies bit at the level of the axis vertebra in the adult okay while in the uh, newborn or in the children it is lied between the atlas vertebra and occipital condyle here okay. clear so this is the level of the uh, of the heart pellet now come on the soft pellet what about the soft pellet here soft pellet is a fibro musculo glandular structure here yeah. it is a mucus covered fibro musculo glandular structure which is attached to the posterior border of the heart pellet here okay and hangs towards the oropharynx here okay so it is a like a curtain which hangs from the posterior border of the here the heart pellet here this soft pellet hangs downward and the forward like this here suppose this is the here structure it hangs downward and the forward here okay like this here yeah. are you able to see here look here it hangs like this okay here it hangs downward and the forward towards the oropharynx so it separate the um, nasal or the nasopharynx from the oropharynx clear now this uh, soft pellet is anteriorly it is fibrous okay anterior part is fibrous okay middle part is muscular and the posterior part is glandular so i told you this is a fibro musculo glandular structure fibro musculo glandular structure here yeah. clear now if you see the diagram here a continuity of this diagram here so this is since downward like this okay here yeah. and this is the tube opening of the auditory tube here yeah. now if you see the presenting part of the uh, this soft pellet soft pellet has a two surface anterior surface and the posterior surface so we can the inferior surface of the superior surface okay here yeah. and the four border okay four border are anterior border here here this is anterior border which is attached to the pellet heart pellet posterior border or the inferior border here okay so upper border and the lower border here and the two side border clear so the two surface anterior surface or inferior anterior inferior surface or posterior surface superior border and the inferior border and two lateral border okay if you see the surface anterior surface anterior surface is concave okay here it looks downward and forward now when this pellet is stressed this anterior surface becomes inferior surface so it becomes here like horizontal okay so on the normally on the relaxed position it becomes a anterior surface clear so it is becomes inferior when the pellet is stretched here clear now the superior surface superior surface faces superiorly okay or the or the posteriorly here on each side here on each side it is connected to the salpingo palatine fold here okay so these are the salpingo palatine fold on superiorly here it is attached to the auditory tube or op opening of the auditory tube here these are the salpingo palatine fold here okay here and this is the another fold the salpingo pharyngeal fold which contain the salpingo pharyngeus muscle uh, you know in the muscles of the pharynx here it descends downward and passes towards the uh, pharynx so superiorly on the both side it is connected to the salpingo palatine fold here clear now upper border come on the upper border upper border is 
attach to the posterior border and the inferior surface of the hard pellet here. Okay, posterior border of the spine thus process and the inferior surface of the hard pellet here. Okay, here and the lateral border, both lateral border here, both lateral border continue with the here the wall of the pharynx here on the both side here. Lateral border continue with the wall of the pharynx. Clear? Here. And the lower border, lower border hangs free. Okay, here. And in the middle, it presents the uvula. Okay, free border, it hangs in the uh, oropharynx. Okay, here. And it acts as a, it, it is known as the uvula. Lower part here, this is the lip. This is the teeth mandible. Okay, here is also teeth, upper teeth. Okay, here, and this is the tongue. This is the epiglottis. Okay, here. Now, on the lower surface, okay, on the from the lower surface of the, the soft pellet, that the two fold passes towards the tongue and the pharynx here. These are this anterior fold here, in known as the known as the palatoglossal fold or the palatoglossal arch here. By the posterior fold is known as the palatopharyngeal arch, which passes through the pharynx. Okay, here. So, two folds are here. Okay. Palatoglossal arch passes downward and the forward and attaches at the anterior tooth and posterior one third of the tongue. Okay, here. And posterior fold is known as the palatopharyngeal fold here, or the arch. Okay. It downward and backward and passes towards the uh, posterior to the tonsillar. And this is the tonsillar fossa. Here. This area is known as the tonsillar fossa here. Okay. This area where the tonsil is lying. So anterior fold. So lower surface of the soft pellet is attached by the two fold, the palatoglossal fold. This is the palatoglossal fold. And this is the palatopharyngeus. Okay, here. This is the salpingo palatine. Salpingo palatine fold. And this is the salpingo pharyngeal. Salpingo pharyngeal fold. Okay, here. So, in this fashion, here the soft pellet is attached. Now, uh, now, what is the composition of the soft pellet? If you see the composition of the soft pellet, soft pellet is made up of the certain structure here. One is the mucous membrane, both sides, I told you, the both sides covered by mucous membrane. Okay, here, first. Second is, here, the palatine aponeurosis. Palatine aponeurosis. Third is, here, the five pair of the muscle, five pairs of muscle, okay, the muscles of the soft pellet, we will see here later on, then the nose and the blood vessel, nerve and the blood vessels, and the fifth is the, the palatine glands, palatine glands, okay, here. So, these are the structure, five structure which are present. There are certain sequences there. So, first we will discuss the, all the structure and the last we will see how they are present from superior to the inferior side here. Clear? So, first is the mucous membrane here. Mucous membrane, I told you, it is upper surface here, to the here, sorry, sorry, this upper surface of the soft pellet and the inferior surface. Both surfaces are lined by the keratinized stratified squamous epithelia. Okay, here. Yeah. And why this is keratinized epithelium here? Because the, this surface is uh, come in contact to the posterior pharyngeal wall here. 
okay here so superior surface and the inferior surface is covered by the stratified squamous epithelium that is a keratinized clear while here posterior surface upper surface of the heart pellet we have seen this is uh, uh, covered by the columnar epithelium okay so this surface come in the contact with the posterior pharyngeal wall and the passa vents ridge we will see later on so that's why it it, it uh, have the friction it creates a friction here okay when it come here so this uh, epithelium has a stratified squamous epithelium okay now come on the palatine aponeurosis what about the palatine aponeurosis so first we will diagram okay here yeah, different muscles and the uh, so suppose you are seeing the bone here okay here from the posterior side here okay here posterior side so we will see the different component of the uh, the soft palate and especially the muscles okay so first we will draw the diagram if you see here the nasal cavity from the posterior side the posterior uh, nares and this uh, posterior part of the oral cavity here so this is the here the midline septum okay here and this is the tube the auditory tube opening Yeah. Okay. This is the auditory tube opening here. If you see here, this uh, this one this is the lower palate, and this is auditory tube opening here, yeah. and this is the pterygoid palate. This is the pterygoid hemulus. This is the palate. Okay, same thing on the opposite side. This is the pterygoid hemulus. This is the palate. Here, pterygoid palate. This is the nares posterior part here and these are the inferior terminate uh, sorry it's a different terminate the superior terminate then this is the middle terminate and this is the inferior terminate And the inferior. Okay, here same thing. Here superior terminate. Middle terminate and inferior terminate. Okay, like this. And here is the petrous temporal bone, apex of the petrous temporal bone on the both side. Okay, here. Okay, and now from the different muscles, what are the different muscle arises? And so one is the Levator valley palatine. Okay, it's, it is also a levator palatine. Simple word is a levator palatine. Okay, thing tensor valley palatine. In short, we also can the tensor palatine. Third is the palatopharyngeus. 
palato pharyngeus muscle fourth is palato glossus palato glossus and the fifth is the musculus uveli musculus uveli okay so these are the five muscle which arises from the different sides and attach to the soft palate here and now this muscle are attached at the palatine aponeuros so the first component here though the first component is the uh, mucous membrane but here we will see here what is the palatine aponeuros palatine aponeuros is a flattened tendon of the tensor palatine muscle actually the tensor palatine muscle arises from the different side passes around the hemulus of the lateral pterygoid plate okay here and then attach okay attach on the posterior border of the hard palate here and flattens so look here so this is suppose the tendon passes tendon of the tensor palate passes around the uh, the pterygoid hemulus and it hangs towards the midline like this and passes on the opposite side here okay so this so this is the palatine aponeurosis okay it is attached on the posterior border of the hard palate flattens and make a we can say this palatine aponeurosis make a base where the all the muscle remaining muscle are attached here okay so this is and in the midline this palatine aponeurosis is split okay split and gives attachment to the musculus uveli clear so we will see so this is the palatine aponeurosis clear now come on the muscles different muscles first is the levator veli palatine muscle okay what are the levator veli palatine muscle levator veli palatine muscle arises from the this is the petrous part of the temporal bone here the inferior surface here okay so this is apex and this is the carotid canal in the carotid canal the internal carotid artery enters covered by the carotid sheath so this muscle arises from the petrous part of the temporal bone inferior surface apex here carotid sheath and the medial lamina of the uh, cartilaginous part of the auditory tube here in this this is the medial lamina okay in the come the medial side here so these are the three sides so look here suppose this is the apex petrous temporal bone this is the medial lamina of the uh, auditory tube tendon descends downward okay here this tendon descends downward here and enters through the sinus of morgagini sinus of morgagini is a space between the here the uh, base of the skull and the upper border of the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx here so this tendon enters through this space and attach on the here and attach on the superior surface of the palatine aponeurosis here between the two slip of the palato pharyngeus muscle here like this okay here so this and both side of the muscle attached to make a u shape curve okay so suppose this is opposite side muscle here descends downward here it is on the superior surface of the palatine aponeurosis and make a u shape structure here this is a levator veli palatine muscle this levator veli palatine muscle elevates the soft palate superiorly okay and help to close the here the oropharynx cut the uh, nasopharynx from the oropharynx okay or we can say that this pharyngeal isthmus here clear so this is the levator veli palatine muscle which elevates the soft palate clear come on the uh, this uh, tensor palatine muscle tensor palatine muscle arises from the here look here from the scaphoid fossa here from the lateral pterygoid plate between the middle tray this is scaphoid fossa here okay then the lateral lamina of the cartilaginous part of the auditory tube here here will be the lateral lamina okay here in this position and the spine of the sphenoid bone here this is the spine of the sphenoid so these are the three sites where the tensor palatine muscle arises here and this muscle after origin descends downward so this is here 
Yeah, this is the spine of the sphenoid bone. Okay, this is the spine of the sphenoid bone. Here, and muscle arises from here, lateral lamina, spine of the sphenoid bone, and the scaphoid fossa. Okay, and this muscle descends downward. So a wide origin. Okay, it wide origin. Then descends downward, passes towards the pterygoid hemulus of the lateral pterygoid plate here. This is here opposite muscle. Okay, here a wide origin converted into a tendon, passes towards the lateral pterygoid plate hemulus. Okay, and then it becomes flatter. Okay, it is converted into a aponeurosis. Clear. So this is, and it makes a a base. Clear. So this is the here uh, tensor palatine muscle. Muscle. What is the action? If you see the action of tensor palatine, this tensor palatine muscle here, when it contract, it stretches and depress the soft palate here. Suppose this is the muscle here. Suppose this muscle contract here, so it become stretch. Okay, here. Okay, and depress the soft palate clear yeah. so it help to close the gap between the nasopharynx and the oropharynx okay here or we can say that it helps in the closing of the uh, pharyngeal isthmus here clear yeah. so this is also important muscle to close the cut the space between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity clear yeah. so this is the action of the tensor palatine another action is here because it arises from the lateral uh, lamina of the cartilaginous part of the auditory tube so it when it contracts it dilates the tube or it opens the uh, opening of the tube the auditory tube so that's why it is also known as the here yeah, this another name is the dilator tubi this muscle also known as the dilator tubi because it is attached to the large lateral lamina of the tube this is cartilaginous part of the auditory tube clear so these are the two action one is it stretches and uh, depress the uh, soft palate clear help in the closing of the pharyngeal isthmus and second is it dilates the tube auditory tube that's why known as dilator tube so these are the two action of the uh, this uh, tensor palatine muscle clear third muscle is the musculus uvulli musculus uvulli here muscle arises from the spine of this here the hard palate posteriorly there is a posterior uh, palatine spine are there here and this muscle arises here in the midline okay passes towards posterior side or free part or the free margin of the uh, this is soft palate it passes it, it, between the splitting of the uh, palatine aponeurosis here and hang or attach to the mucous membrane okay so this is here both side of the musculus uvulli clear so it arises from the spine okay posterior spine the palatine spine here or the posterior border the midline descends downward and attaches at the mucous membrane of the soft palate it descends downward okay it descends downward so this is the musculus uvulli clear what is the action of the musculus uvulli it pulls the uvula forward okay when it muscle contract here it pulls the uvula forward here and anteriorly clear so this is musculus uvulli clear now the fourth third, uh, fourth muscle fourth muscle is the palatopharyngeus muscle what about the palatopharyngeus muscle palatopharyngeus muscle arises by the two slip okay anterior and the posterior anterior slip here both slip arises from the superior surface of the palatine aponeurosis here clear if you look here this diagram this one okay this is the here the anterior slip okay this is the posterior slip okay this posterior slip clear both slip unite to form a one tendon and then this is downward and attaches at the pharyngeal wall okay so these are the anterior posterior slip here 
So we can draw here. This is the anterior slip. Okay, like this. And this is the posterior slip. Both unite to my one tendon. Okay, here. Yeah. This is, and in between the two slip, levator valley palatine inserted. Okay, like this, and both side, like this side, this is the anterior slip, and this is the posterior slip. Okay, so this is the palatopharyngeus muscle here. So after origin, it passes through the Palatopharyngeal arch. I told you this is the palatopharyngeal arch. Here, this is the palatopharyngeal arch here. Okay, so this muscle passes through the this this, this fold is created by this arch. Okay, this the, this muscle. Clear? Yeah. So this palatopharyngeus muscle descends downward and unite with the style. This is salpingopharyngeus. Okay. And stylopharyngeus muscle. Okay, the two muscles, the salpingopharyngeus, stylo, and both mu three muscles unite and insert at the lateral pharyngeal valve or the pharyngeal valve. It descends downward and then it has the three insertion actually. One majority inserted at the lateral pharyngeal valve. Okay, yeah. Conjoint tendon with the salpingopharyngeus. Okay, salpingo. Pharyngeus plus, okay, plus stylopharyngeus. Okay, stylopharyngeus along with the palatopharyngeus unite to form the a common insertion at the pharyngeal wall and the pharyngeal refi here. Clear? Some fiber is spread downward and insert at the Pharyngeal refi here, second type of the fiber. Okay, pharyngeal refi. You know, here suppose uh, this is the, if you are seeing the pharynx posterior side here, okay, here, these are the insertion of the, here the insertion of the constrictor muscles, okay, here, constrictor muscle comes and insert the midline refi posteriorly, along with here. This muscle, few muscle fiber of the palatopharyngeus here descends downward and inside at the pharyngeal refi like this. Inside of the constrictor muscle. Okay, here. Inside like this. Okay, here. And uh, majority fiber inside at the lateral pharyngeal wall because this is a constrictor, this is a uh, longitudinal muscle. Clear? And few fiber, few fiber of this palatopharyngeal passes posteriorly here. Okay. Look here, how it looks. Suppose this is the hard pellet, okay, part of the hard pellet, and this is the soft pellet. Okay, here, and this is the, suppose, mucous membrane of the soft pellet. Clear? No. Look here. Suppose this is, this is the, Levator palatine muscle, okay, coming from the superior side, clear, and this is the suppose this is the here the auditory tube opening of the auditory tube, and here is the salpingopharyngeus muscle, okay. Now, what's happened? Look here. This anterior, uh, I, I'm drawing different color. Okay. Suppose green color. So, this is the anterior lamina. Okay. And this is the posterior lamina. Okay. Here. Yeah. Or posterior fasciculus of the, this palatopharyngeus muscle. Both lamina unite. 
and unite with the here the salpingo pharyngeus and the stylopharyngeus muscle clear here and here and, and this is the uh, this is the thyroid cartilage Okay, here and this is a stylo styler process okay here yeah. and the stylo fringes muscle come okay and all the three muscle they inserted the here yeah. posterior border of the lamina of the thyroid cartilage okay here yeah. so majority of the fiber palato fringes muscle fiber Insert over the posterior border of the lamina of the thyroid. All the three combined with the stylopharyngeus, salpingopharyngeus. This is the stylopharyngeus. This is the salpingopharyngeus. And this green one is the palatopharyngeus here. This is the palato. Okay, here. Yeah. And now, I told you, uh, this majority of fiber, this and downward, insert here. And the few fiber of this palatopharyngeus muscle passes posteriorly. Suppose these are the fiber, oh, sorry, green color fiber, here. Yeah. This fiber passes posteriorly, okay, here, here, and elevates the Suppose this is the mucous membrane, okay, here. here. This is the mucous membrane, red color. And this fiber passes and turns, okay, again anteriorly and meets with the opposites, opposite fiber here, okay, opposite fiber. So this, this fiber passes through the posterior pharyngeal wall deep to the mucous membrane, elevates a fold of the mucous membrane here. Okay, this fiber passes deep to this uh, muscles and this elevate the here yeah, fiber and then here yeah, meets with the opposite fiber. Okay, so this fold which passes posteriorly and this known as a passavent's ridge, a ridge like fold is formed and this is known as the passavent's ridge. This is the passavent's ridge. Okay, here. It, these, are, these are the these fiber on the palatopharyngeus fiber. Okay. And this palatopharyngeal fiber form a, a mucosal fold. This is a passavent's ridge. Clear? So this is very important because this fiber closes the pharyngeal isthmus. Clear? Now, what is the action of the palatopharyngeus muscle? Action of the palatopharyngeus muscle, it elevates the pharynx and the larynx first. Okay, here. Because it is attached to the pharyngeal wall and the uh, this is bone uh, cartilage of the larynx so it levels there and it also closes the pharyngeal isthmus here so the passavent's ridge here by approximating the opposite pal palate of hinges this one side palate of hinges opposite side palate of hinges when it contract here so it closes the pharyngeal isthmus so this is the pharyngeal isthmus here clear yeah. so this is the palate of hinges muscle it's very important muscle then the uh, Fifth muscle, the last muscle, palatoglossus muscle. Palatoglossus muscle arises here. It comes from the lower surface, okay, anterior surface of the, here, the palate, soft palate, okay, here, and descends downward. This is the tongue. Epiglottis, okay, here, and this is, and this palatoglossus, after rising from the inferior surface of the palate, passes downward and attaches at the anterior two third and the posterior one third of the tongue, the side of the tongue, okay, from the palatoglossal arch or the anterior fold of the this uh, tonsillar fossa, okay, here will be the tonsillar fossa, this is the tonsil. Okay, here. 
and here this fold this which this fold here form this is the posterior tonsillar form posterior uh, arch or the tonsillar fold this is the anterior tonsillar fold clear so this is here the palatoglossus muscle and when the palatoglossus muscle contract here clear it elevates the upper posterior part of the tongue and closes the oropharyngeal isthmus here okay here so action elevates the posterior part of the tongue or the base of the tongue and closes the oropharyngeal isthmus so these are the muscle of the palate now what about the nerve supply of this muscle the motor nerve supply if you see the nerve supply the motor supply come from the accessory nerve accessory uh, cranial part of the accessory nerve supply all the muscles of the palate except that this tensor valley palatine muscle this tensor valley palatine muscle arises from the nerve to medial pterygoid nerve to medial pterygoid which come from the trunk of the mandibular nerve which passes through the aortic ganglia without delay and supply the tensor palatine muscle clear so these are the nerve supply and the secreto motor fiber if you see the secreto motor fiber secreto motor fiber to the gland there the glands are present here okay the mucus gland present so secreto motor fiber of the mucus gland come from the here salivary nucleus okay here same as the then the facial nerve supply the lacrimal uh, gland and the, as well as the palatine gland and the uh, glands of the pharynx so same so this now come from the superior salivary nucleus okay then to so the facial nerve intermedius nervus intermedius we can say nervus intermedius then the gatler petrosal nerve okay gatler petrosal nerve then the deep petrosal nerve or oh, sorry the nerve of the pterygoid canal nerve of pterygoid canal then pterygopalatine ganglia pterygopalatine ganglia then the greater and lesser palatine nerve this pterygopalatine ganglia gives the greater and lesser palatine nerve okay here and supply the here the glands palatine glands here okay so these are the secreto motor fiber uh, parasympathetic fiber come and uh, this uh, sympathetic fiber come through the deep petrosal nerve deep petrosal nerve okay so these are the uh, nerve supply and sensory supply sensory supply passes through the greater and the lesser palatine nerve this is also act as a sensory fiber okay so greater and lesser palatine nerve and the long sphenopalatine nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve okay long sphenopalatine okay sphenopalatine nerve and also glossopharyngeal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve also act as a uh, sensory fiber okay sensory while the taste sensation special sensation a special sensation passes through the here special sensation from the palate here okay passes through the glossopharyngeal nerve okay glossopharyngeal nerve because the posterior one third of the tongue supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve carry the sensation special sensation same thing here the at uh, from the soft palate here the sensation the taste sensation passes through the glossopharyngeal nerve okay so these are the sensation now artery supply okay artery supply if you see the artery supply of this gland artery supply here this gland is it come from the here artery supply it come from the greater palatine and lesser palatine artery okay greater and lesser palatine arteries okay which come from the maxillary artery then ascending palatine artery ascending 
पेलेटाइन आर्टरी इस ब्रांच ऑफ द फेशियल आर्टरी ओके असेंडिंग पेलेटाइन ब्रांच ऑफ द फेशियल आर्टरी एंड द थर्ड इज द पेलेटाइन ब्रांच ऑफ द पेलेटाइन ब्रांच ऑफ द असेंडिंग फेरेंजियल आर्टरी पेलेटाइन ब्रांच ऑफ द असेंडिंग pharyngeal artery which you know is branch of the external carotid artery so these are the three branches okay three type of the arteries which supply the soft palate here if you see the venous drainage venous drainage passes through the pharyngeal plexus okay pharyngeal venous plexus and the via paratonsillar sinus pharyngeal venous plexus okay here then the lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage is for it this uh, lymph drain for the retropharyngeal lymph node retro pharyngeal lymph node and the upper group of the deep cervical lymph node okay upper group in the uh, in the cervical region they are the whole one chain of the deep cervical group of the lymph node in which the upper group of the deep cervical lymph node okay so these are the lymph node which drains the lymph from the uh, this pellet okay now what are the arrangement of the structure okay arrangement of the structure from superior to inferior side if you see the whole soft pellet here soft pellet is made up of the different layers okay i told you in the, in the starting so what are the structure here so structure if you superior to inferior this is a columnar layer columnar epithelium of the nasal cavity okay cavity then the glands deep to the this uh, columnar epithelium there is a gland okay here a layer of the gland layer of the mucus gland okay or the palatine gland mucus palatine gland okay then the aponeurosis okay anterior layer of of the palatopharyngeus muscle palato pharyngeus muscle okay here then the uh, no and the then the levator palatine muscle levator palatine muscle then the uh, sorry fourth and fifth is the posterior okay posterior Uh, fasciculus or the posterior fasciculus or uh, lamina posterior fasciculus of the palato pharyngeus muscle okay then the sixth is below there okay in the these, these all the three muscle are attached at the uh, palatine aponeurosis palatine aponeurosis okay here then the below the below the palatine aponeurosis there the palato glossus muscle palato glossus muscle okay and the musculus uveli muscle okay before the palato glossus here the palatine aponeurosis is split and cover the uh, this is musculus uveli muscle so musculus uveli muscle and eighth is the palato glossus muscle Palato glossus muscle. Ninth is the yeah the again the layer of the gland. Okay, a layer of the palatine gland. Palatine gland and the tenth is the mucous membrane. Mucous membrane which is epithelium. The lower the stratified squamous is which is stratified squamous epithelium. upper layer is also stratified squamous epithelium sorry i forget because the upper layer is stratified squamous epithelium here 
because I told you in the posterior part of the uh, this pellet, especially the soft pellet here, uh, superior surface is covered by the squamous uh, epithelium, stratified, non this keratinized. Keratinized here the stratified squamous keratinized because it comes in contact with the posterior pharyngeal wall of the passamensis. So that's why on the both surface here the mucous membrane is covered by the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. So this these are the total ten layer which cover the soft pellet superior to inferior side. First is the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, then the second layer of the mucous palatine glands. Third layer, the anterior layer of the palato of uh, anterior lamina or the fasciculus, fasciculus of the uh, palato pharyngeus muscle. Then the fourth is the levator valley palatine muscle, levator palatine muscle. Fifth is the posterior fasciculus of the palato pharyngeus. Okay, here sixth is the palatine aponeurosis. Clear. Then the seventh is the musculus uveli muscle. And the eighth is palatoglossus muscle, ninth is palatine glands again, deep to the mucous membrane, and tenth is the mucous membrane, stratified squamous epithelium, keratinized. This is all about the uh, soft pellet. If you see the applied aspect of soft pellet, soft pellet is sometimes paralyzed. Okay, so paralysis of the soft pellet leads to the no movements of the soft pellet. So what's happened? Water regurgitates through the nose and the nasal tone occurs. Medulla, this is a nucleus ambiguous. Nucleus ambiguous. From where the uh, cranial part of the accessory nerve come, uh, this is spine, this is vagus nerve also come. Okay, here. So okay, nucleus ambiguous is responsible for supply these muscles. Okay. So when there is a uh, damage occur in the medulla, so this nerve, the cranial part of the accessory nerve, and also the glossopharyngeal nerve, as well as the uh, this vagus now, these are damaged, so leads to the paralysis of this muscle and give rise to the uh, this regurgitation of the fluid and the nasal tone. So this is here all about the uh, soft pellet. And also here important is uh, just last in the in the last year. Look here. Suppose this is the hard pellet and this is the soft pellet. Okay. So there are three U-shaped sling are formed. Okay, here one sling is here superiorly. Here, this sling is formed by the levator palatine muscle. Okay, here this posterior sling, this sling where the pharyngeal isthmus. This sling is due to the here the pharyngeal isthmus where the uh, palatopharyngeal muscle fiber passes posteriorly, and the lower sling here. This sling is formed by the palatoglossus muscle here. Okay, so this is the levator palati. This is the palato palato pharyngeus, and this is the palatoglossus. Okay, so when these slings contract, so levator valley palatini elevates the palate. And this, when this contract, it makes the uh, soft pellet stretch here. So, nasopharynx ne cut from the oropharynx here. And here, this palatoglossoman contract, it narrows the here, or oropharyngeal opening here. Clear? So, this palatoglossus also uh, closes the oropharyngeal opening. So, these three strings are important because formed by the three muscles, levator palatine muscle, palatopharyngeal muscle, and the palatoglossus muscle. So, this is all about the pellet. Thank you.